In today's video, let's dig into the min and max values in the Curves dialog. How do they exactly work and how can we use them? I will be using this test document to explain what is happening. And before we focus into the Curves dialog, let's have a quick look on the document and the intensity panel. The document contains a gradient and blocks with 10 different values. On the bottom, we have the grayscale with the grayscale values. And on the top, the blocks with the RGB values. Let's now have a look at the intensity chart and see how things are mapped. First, we have our straight line, which is the gradient. It starts from zero intensity, which is black, on the left, and moves to 100 intensity on the right, which is white. We also have these three groups of horizontal lines moving from the left to the right. These are the RGB boxes we have. The intensity chart, as the name states, shows the intensity values and not the color values. The intensity is based on the grayscale values. So if I apply a channel mixer and set its mode to grayscale, we will convert the colors to grayscale. And now we can see how the intensity looks like. I can hide and show the R, G and B boxes and notice how this affects the intensity chart. The corresponding horizontal lines will be removed or added. Perfect. I hope you have a feeling now how the intensity chart is mapped and it will definitely help us in a minute to understand what exactly is happening. Let's add the curves adjustment. Notice how the curve is exactly following the straight line in the intensity chart. If I modify the curves line, the curve line is replicated in the intensity chart. This enables us to see the effect of the adjustment. Now, time to focus on the min max fields in the dialog. In short, the min value determines the beginning value of the curves diagram, which is the bottom left and the max defines the max ending value in the diagram, which translate to the top and the right. Sounds a bit confusing maybe, so let's start with a simple test case where I will enter 0.5 as the min value. This means that our starting value of the curve will be set to 0.5 and our max values are still at 1 meaning the bar will now move from 0.5 to 1 horizontally and vertically. To clearly see what is happening, I will flatten the curve to the top, which is basically saying make everything a value of 1, which stands for white. Because we set a minimum, this will apply for values larger than 0.5. We can clearly see this in our test image. Notice how the 60 to 100 range is now white in the grayscale boxes. In the RGB boxes, they also have been replaced with the max R, G and B values. Also notice the intensity chart. The line stops now halfway and the next values are all flattened to 100, which is 1 in the terms of curves. Basically, we applied this curve to the image. If I flatten the line to the bottom, notice what happens. The values do not go to black or zero, because the minimum value is 0.5. So in this case, everything about 0.5 is leveled down to 0.5. So the gray blocks, 60, 70, 80 and 90 are all now mid-gray. Why the pure white is not affected, I have no idea. Maybe a little glitch in my system. Also notice the intensity chart. It shows us the applied curve chart, which is a straight line until half and then a flattened line at 50. The intensity line shows us the exact curve that is being applied. For example, if I change the curve, notice how the curve in the intensity chart changes. All the changes are being applied to the top right as our min value is 0.5 and our max value is 1. By applying a min and max value in the curves dialog, we actually select an area from the original curve to work on. So if I enter 0.2 for min value and 0.4 for max, it will be affecting this area in the curve. 
So when I flatten it, the changes are applied indeed to that area, as you can see in the intensity chart. If I flatten the line to the top, the values between 0.2 and 0.4 will all get the value of 0.4. Suppose I want to target this top right area. Well, the max is 1, but the starting point or the min will be 0.75. Let's type that in and adjust the curve. Notice again how the boxes with the values higher than 75 are affected. We also see this in our intensity chart. Making the changes in the curves only changes that specific area of the total curve, which is very nicely shown in the intensity chart. If I change the values to 0.3 and 0.6, See how only that area between 0.3 and 0.6 is affected. Pretty awesome. Interestingly enough, the min doesn't have to be a value less than the max, which allows for interesting effects. For example, I can draw a curve and change the min to 1 and the max to 0, which inverts and mirrors the curve. If I reset the curve and set the min to 1 and the max to 0, notice how the curve reacts in a mirrored manner. By flattening the curve to the top, instead of brightening everything, it darkens it. You can also enter values bigger than 1. For example, if I enter 2 as max, only the bottom left part is effectively applied. You can also enter 2 for the minus, which mirrors the effect, but this time the top right area will be used. Before showing some possible use cases, there's one thing to keep in mind. When using min and max values, it is best not to change the starting and the ending points, as these will create gaps. So when I draw the curve, which applies from 0.5 to 1, and then change the starting point, notice how a gap or a sudden jump is created at the 0.5 mark. So in order to make sure the, the applied adjustment is smooth, make sure that the begin and the end always stay at the default positions. Another cool feature is that once you have a curve for a specific region, you can easily move it to a different region by changing the min and the max values. By changing the min and the max values, notice how the curve is moved to the new region. Time to look at a practical use case. I will paste an image and then apply a curves adjustment which will apply to the first part of the curve. If I lower the curve, notice how this affects only that area. In theory, I can apply a similar curve without changing the min max. Let's add another curves adjustment and draw the same curve which would apply for the whole range. I'm going to add a point at the center and just one above it, so we fix that curve from that point on. I can now move the bottom left part in a similar way. We have created the same effect. If we compare the two adjustments, they are very similar. The advantage of a ranged curve is that I do not need to fix the curve with additional points. I can for example change the blend mode to screen, so the image gets lighter in the darker areas. However, this is not really the case. The whole image has become brighter. Why is that? Well, it is because we updated only the first part of the curve. The second part still exists. When I turn off this image, we can see the actual applied curve in the intensity chart with our test image. Notice how we have lowered the first part, but the second part is still a straight image. This is why the whole image still gets lighter. We can fix that by applying a blend range. I can enable the image again, and on the curves adjustment I will open up the blend ranges and modify it so that it will only affect the lighter areas. If I turn on and off the adjustment, have a look at that, we brightened only the darker areas. The advantage of this is that I can now change the range of the curve 
to have the effect apply to a smaller or bigger range. We can also stack multiple curves with different ranges on top of each other to target specific ranges. I'm adding two more adjustments to finalize this image. Both of these adjustments have different ranges and as you noticed, at the end we get a very interesting result where we have more contrast and especially the effect of the sun is more predominantly visible. Here is an interesting fact. You can reproduce a hard mix blend by using the min and the max options. Let me first add the curves adjustment and then change its blend mode to hard mix. As expected, the hard mix blend mode we get a very pixelated, pure colored image. I can replicate the same effect by adding two curves adjustment and in the first one I will have a range from 0 to 0 0.5. The curve will be flattened so everything until a value of 0.5 gets black. The second adjustment will have a range from 0.5 to 1. And this time the curve will be maximized, meaning that everything above a value of 0.5 will get the value of 1, resulting in pure colors. With as a result the same effect as the hard mix blend mode. In a way, I have explained to you how the hard mix blend mode works using the curves range. I can now also do the opposite. In the first adjustment I can maximize everything and on the second one I can minimize all the values, which results in a grey image. Basically this is the same as a regular curves adjustment with a flat line in the middle. Again, the advantage of having two layers will be that you can control the two regions separately without affecting each other. Notice when I change the right part of the curve it affects the left part. With two separate adjustments I can change the right part and the left part can stay a straight line, which is also shown very clearly in the intensity chart when I enable our test image. In the next upcoming videos I will share some techniques utilizing this min and max values in the curves adjustment to create interesting effects. I hope by watching this video the min and max values in a curves adjustment is no longer a mystery to you. Thank you for watching and until the next video.